Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the road to Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were walking into a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with one another, Jesus himself came up and walked alongside them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Well, what things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is now the third day since all this took place. In addition... Some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and slow to a heart of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he walked, talked with us on the road, and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The story of the road to Emmaus I think is one of the most beautiful in the whole Bible. It has many things that we can relate to at the moment. There's the isolation and uncertainty, the sense that everything has changed. But it is a story of hope, of body language transformed from defeated bowed shoulders to reanimated bustle and an excited return back to Jerusalem as Cleopas and his companions' bewilderment is changed to the dawning of light and hope. Cleopas's companion is probably Mary, his wife. It's a good reason to think so, because John mentions it in his Gospel. And look at what they believed about Jesus from their conversation with him. Jesus was a prophet, or perhaps more than a prophet. He had the power of God within him. He performed miracles. He taught with authority. He was the Messiah. He was God's anointed, the one to free Israel, the people of God. They were so close, close to the truth. And here's Cleopas's puzzled statement. They crucified him. We had hoped he was the one to free Israel. And the good news is very close to that, isn't it? They crucified him and that is how he did redeem Israel. It reminds us that it is just one short step for the grace of God to be able to change suffering and sorrow, isolation and despair, to hope 
and triumph and is indeed good at the moment to be reminded of that. But there are echoes in the story that Luke doesn't want us to miss. The first echo is about meals. If we cast our minds back to Genesis, to a moment heavy with significance, the words, the woman took some of the fruit and ate it, she gave it to her husband and he ate it. It's a story told and retold over and over as the beginning of the woes and suffering coming on the human race. Death itself is traced to that moment of rebellion. The whole creation from then on is subject to death and futility and sorrow. It's striking at the moment, on the news, in conversations, in social media, people all over the world are struggling with the continuing fact of mortality and death as it confronts us through the, the COVID-19 virus. The second echo is about walks. Cleopas and Mary, this story about them, is the second story that Luke has told of us of a, of a walk away from Jerusalem. This second couple thought Jesus was no longer with them, <laughs> but he was, though they didn't recognise him. I wonder if you can think who the first couple might have been. It's in Luke chapter 2. And yes, it's Mary and Joseph coming home from the temple in Jerusalem, thinking Jesus was with them. But he wasn't. They looked for him for three days before finding him eventually in the temple with the learned teachers. Didn't you know, he says to his frantic mother, didn't you know that I'd be doing my father's work? And here we have, in Luke chapter 24, a different couple. And at the end of three days of soul-searching, Jesus effectively says to them, didn't you know that this was necessary for me to be doing my father's work. And there's a third echo, isn't there? It's about eyes. Adam and Eve's eyes were opened to the consequences of their rebellion. And now Cleopas and his companion's eyes are opened to Jesus's presence and the start of new creation. As he took the bread, blessed it, broke it to them, and then the eyes of both of them were opened and they recognised him. Like Adam and Eve, their eyes were opened. Their eyes were opened and they long discover the long curse of death is broken. And with Jesus, there's a dawn of a new beginning, brimming with life and hope and joy and new possibilities. And this couple shares in the first new meal of new creation. Luke has told us the story, almost inviting us in on the walk with Jesus. No wonder Emmaus has become a symbol of the Christian journey and pilgrimage and faith experience. We too are invited to accompany Jesus on this journey of faith that involves uncertainty at the moment. It may involve us all in anxiety and sorrow in the past or eventually a struggle to understand. We too were invited to hear the Bible explained and to have our hearts burn within us. And we too may journey with shattered hopes, heavy hearts, thinking God isn't with us. But in fact, through Jesus, he's travelling alongside us, trying to help us understand his purposes. And we too are invited to share this first meal of the new creation, bread and wine in his risen presence, and I look forward very particularly in hope that after this lockdown, when the restrictions are ended, that we share together in bread and wine in our college church. Amen. <laughs>